Yes, sir. We can start now. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is a pleasure to welcome you again to the um, chemical engineering lecture series that we have been conducting uh, almost fortnightly. And this is from the School of Chemical and Biotechnology, the chemical engineering student. Um, again, as we say, we do these lectures as not a part of the curriculum, but to extend our curriculum to increase your knowledge about various subjects. And to that effect, we actually have a distinguished speaker um, over here, Mr. R. Girish. Uh, so before I proceed towards um, you know, welcoming the speaker and introducing him, let me um, kindly request uh, our, our professor, uh, Mr. M. Sarvanan, Sarvanan, sir, to actually give a welcome address and talk about um, the, the engineering lecture series and so on. And then I would request Rangabhasham, sir, to introduce the speaker. Sarvanan, sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gautam. Uh, Respected uh, and beloved Dean Dr. K. S. Rajan, uh, respected and beloved uh, Associate Dean Dr. V. Pandusamy, uh, dis distinguished uh, speaker for today's lecture, uh, and alumni, and uh, my batchmate R. Girish, uh, head of sales and marketing, uh, Kavastro India Limited, uh, my faculty colleagues. And my student friends. Good evening, one and all. Uh, before uh, uh, welcoming uh, Girish uh, for this uh, lecture series, I would just like to tell about the transformation that has happened uh, over the years. So, Girish belongs to uh, 2001 batch, 2001 password batch of uh, this institute, previously known as uh, Shanwa College of Engineering. Uh, then uh, it has attained the uh, demonstration status in the same year, 2001, and uh, the students admitted after uh, 2001 are uh, coming under uh, uh, this software deemed university uh, curriculum. Now, uh, uh, related to the transformation I'm talking about, uh, so previous, previously when we have a Shanmua College of Engineering, uh, we had an association uh, referred as uh, Shanmua Chemical Engineering Association Schema, under which we have uh, different activities carried by students. Okay? And uh, we had a yearly symposium uh, conducted under the name of your cognizance. Uh, after that, uh, after the formation of uh, students chapter of uh, Indian Institute of Chemical Engineers uh, here, at, uh, the, here at the department, we have actually broadened the spectrum of the activities undertaken by the students. Uh, where we are actually every year, every year conducting the conference, uh, national conference on advances in process engineering. That is due every October, but uh, this year due to the pandemic situation, we are not able to do that. Uh, and uh, as, uh, this semester, uh, we have uh, only the online interaction with the students. And uh, to bridge the gap, what the uh, students uh, leave uh, left out, uh, feel left out, uh, based on the interactions uh, that is being arising out of the normal activities uh, based on conferences, symposiums, or other lectures. Uh, we have taken this initiative of uh, this campaign lecture series uh, connected on a virtual platform uh, from September 5th, where uh, the experts from industries are, uh, uh, say, uh, invited to deliver the lecture and to have an interaction with uh, our current uh, batch of students. And we thought it would be more prudent uh, to, say, uh, invite the industrial uh, experts uh, who have graduated from Sasra, so that they can have more of, again, uh, sort of uh, uh, relatability, okay, where they can ask from their own series okay, about uh, uh, what is happening in the different industries uh, they are part of. So, uh, this is what I asked to tell about. Uh, wanted to tell about uh, the transformation that has happened related to uh, what uh, uh, the speaker may not be aware of. So I just wanted to uh, tell this one. And uh, as part of uh, today's uh, lecture, uh, as the topic is circular economy in plastic industry, so I think it is quite fascinating. And also, uh, and also, Girish is a 
uh, very uh, eloquent as well as a fast learner. I hope his uh, expertise in this field uh, will uh, enlighten us okay, uh, during the course of uh, today's talk. Okay. So with this uh, input, uh, I just uh, like to welcome one and all. And I just like Dr. Rangabhasham to uh, formally introduce the speaker for today's lecture. Dr. Rangabhasham. Sir, go watch him, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Our today's speaker, uh, Mr. Girish, completed his Bachelor of Technology degree in the Department of Chemical Engineering from Shastra Deemed University in the year 1997 2001. Completed the postgraduate diploma in business administration from Symbiosis School of Distance Learning, Pune, and postgraduate certificate program in business management from XLRI Jamshedpur. Currently, he is the head of sales and marketing in thermoplastics polyurethanes from Covestro India Private Limited, which is a Mumbai, which is presently in Mumbai, and. Uh, he is having altogether 19 years of experience in sales, marketing, business development and technical services in chemical industries in the sectors of plastics, paints and lubricants. Thank you. Now I request our speaker to take over the session. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rangabhasham. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rangabhasham and uh, Professor Sarvan and for the kind words of uh, introduction. So, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, at the outset, I would like to uh, thank the Chemical Engineering Department of Shastra for giving me an opportunity to interact uh, with the students. Uh, uh, this is uh, indeed a, a very good opportunity for me to interact with all of you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, before I get into my topic, uh, as Tarvanan was explaining, uh, this is indeed a very good initiative where the students of uh, chemical engineering are uh, able to listen to the industry relevant topics uh, from Almini. So this is uh, a very, very uh, good initiative, I would say. And also this uh, helps the Almini also to reconnect uh, with the students. Uh, which uh, brings back pleasant memories of the college. So I can recall those uh, days when I was the uh, student uh, uh, during 1997 and 2001, uh, where uh, we had uh, some of those uh, professors uh, are still there. Uh, we had uh, Dr. Ponnuswamy that time, uh, Dr. K. S. Rajan, Dr. Alagas, and so I have learned uh, a lot of. Uh, chemical engineering subjects from these uh, distinguished professors and it is a very uh, indeed uh, a great opportunity uh, to come back uh, to the institution from where I uh, study and to share uh, whatever uh, I have been doing or uh, learning uh, in the industry. So with that uh, I will uh, jump into the topic. Uh, just give me a minute uh, so that I can share my screen with you. It's, yeah, it's loading. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So the topic for uh, today's discussion is uh, circular economy in plastic industry. 
I'm sure uh, all of you must be aware about uh, the plastic industry as a whole. But what is this uh, circular economy in plastic industry? So I'll come to this. Uh, what is circular economy in plastic industry? As I get through the uh, presentation, yeah. the agenda for the day I have divided into three parts. First, we start off with uh, plastic and its uses, uh, which we I'll try to cover in 13 minutes. Then we come to the problem of plastic pollution, which is indeed a, a big problem. Uh, and then I'll take about four minutes to cover that, and then we move on uh, to what is the solution? How moving from a linear to a circular economy would help us in addressing this problem? So that I will take in 23 minutes. So probably we cover this uh, session in 40 minutes. OK. So from the time we wake up uh, to the toothbrush that we use, to the mobile phones, the things we touch, uh, everywhere uh, uh, we see plastics. And plastics have become an uh, integral part of our life and uh, almost uh, indispensable, I should say. Even in the COVID times, uh, we, are, we are going through some tough uh, times, uh, turbulent times, uh, where there is a lot of uncertainty and we are fighting a pandemic, uh, the plastics, uh, say face masks that we use are all made of uh, plastics. The coveralls that we use uh, is made of plastics. Uh, the medical kits that uh, are used for testing uh, are made of uh, plastic. So there is plastics uh, everywhere uh, supporting us. And as you can see, there are various plastics, uh, polyethylene terephthalate, uh, high density polyethylene, LDP. So there are a lot, large number of plastics that are being used today. And uh, the single use plastics uh, also have been uh, helping us uh, in the relief measures. Our food packets uh, were, plast uh, were packed in plastics. Uh, the bottle that, uh, of water that is being supplied is again made in plastics. So even in during COVID uh, relief measures, they have been helping us. Also, some plastics have been very used uh, innovatively. So uh, one of the important measures to fight COVID is to have social distancing. You can see the uh, uh, polycarbonate being used as a barrier uh, for uh, between people to enable social distancing. Even in the auto rickshaws that you commit uh, commute, uh, they have some kind of a barrier made with uh, plastics. And also, in uh, the, if you have to visit a physician, a physician also uses uh, uh, some kind of barrier uh, when he examines us. So plastics as a material has uh, several advantages. They, it is lightweight. It is durable. It's non-breakable. Uh, it's very versatile and cost effective. It's also environmentally friendly. But the visibility of the litter is out screaming the superiority of its eco footprint. So a lot of litter is causing a bad name for plastics. How is plastics better than other materials that is available? Say, example, if you have to compare it with paper, paper involves cutting down trees. Uh, paper industry is very water intensive, so it requires a lot of water, chemicals, and uh, energy uh, to make paper. And if you have to compare it with uh, a glass, glass requires high uh, temperature for manufacturing. Uh, it is, again, uh, causes a lot of air pollution. And uh, glass as a material is quite heavy. So if you have to compare it with the competing materials, plastics uh, definitely is more environmental friendly uh, than the other materials that are available. Now let's understand where uh, the plastics have been used. So plastics uh, have been used in uh, various industries. Uh, packaging is one big industry where plastic is being used. Uh, it is also used in uh, agriculture, electronics, houseware. So uh, you can see uh, it is uh, used across uh, industry domains. In packaging, uh, again, a lot of material being, is being used. Plastics are one among them. We have metals, we have glass, and we have boards. But if you can see, uh, the larger part of uh, the flexible packaging material and the rigid packaging material together constitute about 42% of the total uh, packaging material. Yeah, and this is quite large uh, part of uh, the packaging material that uh, is being used uh, for packing various uh, materials, be it the foodstuffs or whatever uh, we consume. 
So this is uh, something very significant. And the brands are responsible for using the material uh, that goes into this. So now let's get into rigid packaging. So in rigid packaging, you have a single polymer packaging, uh, which could be uh, polyethylene terephthalate, polyethylene PP, yeah, which have moderate barrier properties. And the, in rigid packaging, you also have multi-material packaging, which means there is more than one material. Say, for example, uh, you have paper, aluminum, PE. Uh, uh, these are usually used in cases of tetra packs. So this is, again, a very complex structure uh, because you need fantastic barrier properties. And barrier properties are what? Uh, the food that we eat has to be protected from oxygen, from uh, uh, moisture and from microbes. So you need good uh, properties, barrier properties in the material so that the material can be protected and is very safe to use. If you move on to uh, the flexible packaging, again, flexible packaging has mono material, which means single material in use, like the milk packets that uh, we get every day morning. They are made of uh, polyethylene. Uh, uh, some other materials are also being used, say, example, uh, PET, PP. These are, again, have moderate barrier properties. And when uh, there are uh, also multi-material packaging available in, say, for example, the chips packet, uh, the laves that you use. So they have multi-material. It's more than one polymer, uh, PE, PET, PVC, or, and aluminum. So it also depends upon who the manufacturer is and what uh, what is the form of packing that he is using or what is the kind of material that he is using in the packaging plastics are really helping us uh, but are we responsibly using it uh, on to a right you can see a, uh, a picture that how we have been littering the plastic everywhere and there is one question that we will have also have to think uh, is there is a virus which is bigger than the COVID-19 that we are today facing. That is the virus of human behavior. So are we responsibly disposing whatever plastics that we are using? So it's a very, very important uh, that uh, we care for the environment and do a responsible disposable of the plastics that we are using. So this uh, chart illustrates uh, where does the plastic land up? 40% of the plastic uh, gets into landfills, which should not be the case. 32% of the plastics that we use uh, get into uh, the rivers, oceans. Yeah, and, and these are very, very big problems. If uh, the leakage is happening in terms of landfill, uh, in, in terms of the uh, water bodies getting polluted with plastics, only 14% of the plastics uh, get uh, into, say, uh, something like a kiln in the cement industry for energy recovery, which is a very, very small fraction of the leakage that is happening. And uh, globally, uh, the recycling rates of plastics are not very high. Uh, it's about 14%. And only 2% of uh, the plastics uh, get uh, uh, almost uh, uh, in, in terms of the closed loop recycling. Yeah, so this is where uh, the problem is coming. Uh, it's it's not the plastic, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, how are we going to dispose the plastic or reuse the plastic? So as I said before, there will be more plastic in the sea than fish by 2015, unless the industry cleans up its act. So you can see uh, there is a, a, a huge leap of uh, plastics uh, uh, lying. And uh, this is uh, already starting uh, affecting uh, the, water, the water bodies uh, or the fishes or all the uh, animals uh, that live on water. Yeah? And 250 tons of plastic waste would enter the ocean during this presentation, which is quite a large amount of uh, plastic. And unfortunately, less than 9% of plastic is mechanically recycled. When I say this, uh, what is mechanical recycling? Mechanical recycling is uh, converting plastics into another usable form without the change of its chemical structure. So that is called mechanical uh, recycling. I will touch upon that. 300 million tons of plastic waste per year. 
and plastic pollution has become a, a major environmental and industry pain point today. And now businesses are under regulatory pressure to promote recycling. So this is now coming to all the manufacturers that uh, they will have to encourage recycling. Too much of plastic, I think it's not the problem. The problem is too much of plastics which is not recycled. And I will now compare uh, how much of plastic gets recycled in each of those countries. Say for in example, United States, only 9% of plastic is recycled. In European Union, it's only 27%. And we should be proud that in India, 60% of plastic is getting recycled. Uh, but there's a lot of things that we need to do because uh, we can still see that there is a lot of litter lying around in India. And what? Uh, we are only one-tenth of per capita consumption of waste. So uh, the rate of plastic consumption, if you have to compare with the Western countries, it's still very, very less in India. And there is a large room for growth of plastics. So where, uh, as I said before, where does the plastic end up? Uh, the plastic ends up in landfill or it is incinerated and uh, 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 it causes air pollution sometimes and uh, also uh, as a marine pollutant. So what is the alternative to plastics? Uh, what should be the alternate? The alternate should be a functional equivalent. Uh, it should be very cost effective. It should be available at all places and it should be scalable. And most important, it should be environmentally sustainable, which means it has to have a lesser eco footprint. This uh, brings us to the solution for this problem. So I have been discussing until now about what is the problem. So what is the solution? So the solution for this uh, solving this plastic problem is to move from a linear economy to a circular economy. So what is a linear economy? In a linear economy, we take, make, and dispose, which means uh, we do not recycle. In a circular economy, we close the loop, so we recycle. So what, what is a typical definition of a circular economy? So circular economy is based on the principles of designing out waste and pollution, keeping products and materials in use, and uh, regenerating natural systems. So this is the way uh, going forward. So we will have to move from a linear economy into a circular economy so that we design out waste and pollution and also keep the products and materials in use. Here I'll show you the plastics life chains and uh, how uh, plastics can be put into the circular economy. So uh, as you all know, uh, all the students are of chemical engineering from crude oil. We get uh, the petrochemical feedstocks, uh, typically monomers. From monomers, we get polymers. And from polymers, uh, a lot of intermediate plastic products are made, say films, multi-layer films, preforms, bottles. They are then converted into bottles, pouches, cartons, and then probably into soft drinks, chocolates, and then they are uh, uh, dispensed or rather uh, given through the vending machine which uh, sometimes also re results in littering. So what would be the solution? The solution is, of course, we will have to do a segregation of the waste. So we will have to segregate uh, waste, some are say recyclable waste, uh, uh, and uh, we will have to do segregation at the source. So we can close the loop by doing mechanical recycling. We can close the loop again by doing chemical recycling. Now, chemical recycling is a process where the plastic is converted back into its monomers, so which can again be used for making further uh, resins. Also, there is a process called as pyrolysis. In pyrolysis, uh, the plastic material is heated at a high temperature in the absence of oxygen to convert it into an oil or a gas, which can again be used. So you can clearly see that there are options available for recycling. The option could be mechanical recycling, where the uh, plastic is just converted it's into its from one physical form to another physical form without the change in the uh, chemical properties. Uh, the uh, 
plastic can be broken down into its monomers through chemical uh, recycling. And uh, as I said before, uh, you can also do a pyrolysis. Some of the plastics, interestingly, have also been used for road making. And I'm sure there is, uh, if I'm not a professor in uh, Madurai Kamaraj University, which has a patent of uh, using these plastics uh, in the road making. And also plastics has uh, uh, being used in energy recovery, say, for example, in terms of the clean applications in a cement mill. So now uh, I will try to explain the concept of uh, circular economy uh, uh, through a video of uh, Alan MacArthur Foundation. And uh, probably uh, I would request Dr. Rangabhashyam to play this video for all of us. Rangabhashyam. Yes, sir. sir yeah. Can you please stop presenting by that? Uh, we have a provision to do that. Yes, I'll do that, sir. Yeah, please stop presenting. Yeah. And, uh, Gautam, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Now I will... Uh... I will start. Yes. Deeds, mobile phones, fridges. We know they don't biodegrade. Here, we're talking about uh, another sort of. Dr. Gautam, can Sorry, you play it from the, the side? Yeah, can you play it from the first? Yeah. Thank you. And can you make it also full screen so that everybody can see it? Yeah. Living systems have been around for a few billion years and will be around for many more. In the living world, there's no landfill. Instead, materials flow. One species waste is another's food, Energy is provided by the sun, things grow, then die, and nutrients return to the soil safely. And it works. Yet as humans, we've adopted a linear approach. We take, we make, and we dispose. A new phone comes out, so we ditch the old one. Our washing machine packs up, so we buy another. Each time we do this, we're eating into a finite supply of resources and often producing toxic waste. It simply can't work long term. So what can? If we accept that the living world's cyclical model works, can we change our way of thinking so that we too operate a circular economy? Let's start with the biological cycle. How can our waste build capital rather than reduce it? By rethinking and redesigning products and components and the packaging they come in, we can create safe and compostable materials that help grow more stuff. As they say in the movies, no resources have been lost in the making of this material. So what about the washing machines, mobile phones, fridges? We know they don't biodegrade. Here, we're talking about another sort of rethink. A way to cycle valuable metals, polymers and alloys so they maintain their quality and continue to be useful beyond the shelf life of individual products. What if the goods of today became the resources of tomorrow? It makes commercial sense. Instead of the throw away and replace culture we've become used to, we'd adopt a return and renew one where products and components are designed to be disassembled and regenerated. One solution may be to rethink the way we view ownership. What if we never actually owned our technologies? We simply licensed them from the manufacturers. Now, let's put these two cycles together. Imagine if we could design products to come back to their makers their technical materials being reused and their biological parts increasing agricultural value. And imagine that these products are made and transported using renewable energy. Here we have a model that builds prosperity long term. And the good news is, there are already companies out there who are beginning to adopt this way of working. But the circular economy isn't about one manufacturer changing one product. It's about all the interconnecting companies that form our infrastructure and economy coming together.
It's about energy. It's about rethinking the operating system itself. We have a fantastic opportunity to open new perspectives and new horizons. Instead of remaining trapped in the frustrations of the present, with creativity and innovation, we really can rethink and redesign our future. Thank you, uh, Professor Gautam, for sharing that video. If you can uh, stop presenting, then probably I can. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yes, sir. I've stopped, and you can start presenting. Yes. Thank you, sir. So I hope uh, you liked the video. Uh, this uh, institution is uh, a very famous institution which is advocating the concept of uh, circular economy. I hope you can now see my screen again. Hello? Uh, yes, 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 you can see that. Yes, you yes, fine, thanks. Uh, so what is the action plan? Uh, there is an alliance uh, called Alliance to End Plastic Waste, and they have been working on few action areas. So as you can see, there are six action areas uh, that which they are working on. And the first uh, one is the front end design. So during the design stage itself, you will have to design a plastic which is or a product which is recyclable. So, so, so they are educating the designers about the use of right materials, which uh, and uh, the knowledge for designing for recycling. The second uh, uh, action area that they're working is on access to collection. It's very important uh, that the plastic once after its use, uh, there are basic infrastructure enabling convenient and necessary recovery and recycling. So this is uh, collection is again very, very important uh, because uh, most of the plastics are uh, lying as litter because uh, there are no proper areas uh, for disposing or uh, rather collecting it. Third most uh, important, and I would say uh, among all the action area uh, action points that they are working on is uh, participation and engagement. So uh, this is a, a social issue, and uh, this change cannot happen unless we involve the people and the community at large in making this change. So uh, a community engagement uh, is very very important in tackling the problem of plastic uh, pollution. The fourth one is uh, about sorting, uh, or rather, we uh, we should also also be saying that segregation at source. Uh, in most of the uh, housing uh, societies, at least in the one that I live in in Mumbai, uh, now there is a clear uh, sorting between the dry waste and the wet waste. So uh, we have uh, two dust bins or uh, bins in our home where we clearly separate uh, the dry waste and the wet waste. So this is again important because this uh, sorting or segregation uh, should be happening at the source level. Also, uh, uh, if we move on to the next point, that's about the processing. Uh, the processing technologies uh, that are available uh, should also be scaled up. So you need a good mechanical recycling solutions, which can be scaled up to handle the kind of volume of uh, plastics that we are uh, generating. Uh, last uh, but not the least, uh, the end markets. So you should also have markets where these end uh, or uh, plastics can be reused. So we should also identify end markets where the reused plastics uh, uh, can be used. So this is uh, some of the action areas. And uh, my company, Covestro, is also a part of this alliance. Uh, and uh, in India, this alliance is doing a lot of projects. They are doing uh, projects uh, in Haridwar, uh, in Pondicherry. So uh, a lot of uh, action is happening on the ground uh, from alliance to end plastic waste. Now, moving on uh, to what are the brands doing? Uh, so you can see uh, there are a lot of fast moving consumer brands uh, in India. 
uh, of the likes uh, unilever pepsi marico dabur nestle itc these are some of the leading brands which make fast moving consumer goods so they have uh, started uh, giving public commitments about the use of uh, the plastics so unilever says that it will move to 100% reusable recyclable or compostable plastic packaging by 2025 and 2025 is not far away so you can clearly see that uh, the the global companies are already starting working on it and unilever also says that they will reduce the use of virgin plastic packaging by 50% by 2025 and uh, if we move on to another company say itc itc says that they would ensure that 100% of the product packaging used is reusable recyclable or compostable within the next 10 within the next decade so all the brands uh, are having some kind of a commitment uh, in uh, enabling uh, the reduction of uh, plastic litter okay now i would again uh, uh, request uh, professor gautam uh, to share a video about uh, banian nation and banian nation uh, is a startup company uh, two very young individuals are uh, trying to resolve this problem of uh, plastic pollution and let's see what they are doing sir uh, can yes. you stop presenting yes. with that we have a question i'll do that gautam sir yeah yes sir thank you I always knew going into business school that I wanted to solve real world problems plaguing developing economies. During one of my travels in India, the filth and squalor deeply disturbed me. However, I realized that something amazing was happening underneath. India was recovering and recycling almost double that of any developing or developed economy in the world, but yet the benefits of such a system were not being felt. I wanted to solve all this and I wanted to build an organization that would fundamentally transform the way India saw recycling and plastics. This is how my journey from Silicon Valley to the back alleys of Hyderabad began. If you look at what Mani and Raj are doing, having given up what could have been otherwise extremely I'm sure profitable careers is to have built a technologically driven, technologically innovative organization. And I think it behooves us to back these two youngsters to develop something which actually could be hugely scaled up and that is something that we need as a country desperately recycling activities in india are driven by market forces that are informal illegal and largely invisible millions of rag pickers today scavenge the street corner bins and the landfills collecting valuable materials who then sell to the kabadi walas who then sell to the back end aggregators who finally sell to the recyclers the goal of such an industry really is to recover the materials at the lowest possible cost and at any cost we started off by first tackling plastics if you think about it plastics is perhaps the most versatile inventions of our time but the single use nature of plastic means it has become an ecological and environmental poison a lot of the plastic ends up in landfills and is never used again whatever plastic that is recycled is recycled in a very rudimentary manner the back end recyclers bite bend and burn plastic in order to identify the resin and grade of the plastic forcing producers at the end of the value chain to depend on hundreds of such recyclers for consistent quality recycling the need of the hour right now is a formal recycling system which ensures a superior quality and the ability to recycle the material that has entered the system more than once to do that we started off by building a very simple app in hyderabad where we mapped over 1500 stationary recyclers this data gave us a birds eye view of the city of hyderabad data such as the amount of waste coming out of your house data on local efficiencies of collection and transportation of waste At Banyan we have used mechanical and thermal testing techniques in order to produce a high quality recyclate that rivals virgin plastic. 
when the product re-enters the waste value chain, its ability to be recycled increases by a factor of three. We're very grateful for the team of IX, Shujog and KKR in making us today perhaps one of the most well-rounded uh, startups in the recycling space in India. In IX, we found an organization that would take aspiring social entrepreneurs like us and put them in touch with the impact investors not just from India but from across the world. Shujog uh, helped us in quantifying the real social impact that Banyan Nation was going to have on the nation. KKR truly believed in what we were doing. It manifested itself uh, in the advice they would give us, helping us understand the true economic impact on the waste management space in India. Now you have a group of smart guys who, have, you know, who are engineers or business guys coming from Silicon Valley, getting advice from investors, trying to build a sustainable, scalable business. Today, we've established a proof of concept. We've integrated the supply chain. We're producing some world-class granules, uh, the plastic pellets that brands could use. We can scale not only across cities, but also I think we have the potential to scale across vertical. I'm truly excited uh, for where we are heading as a company, and I look forward to continuing this amazing work and actually truly changing the way India recycles, thinks about plastic and waste management. Thank you, uh, Professor Gautam. Uh, I think uh, th this company has uh, won a lot of awards and is getting a lot of uh, capital uh, investments uh, coming in uh, for whatever it is trying to do. Uh, and give me a second until I get back to my presentation. Hope you can see my presentation once again. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. OK, now let's come to uh, one of those uh, solutions, what we call, uh, and, and this is uh, a bio-based uh, solution. So we've heard of, of the term bioplastics. So uh, there are feedstocks, which are uh, non-petroleum feedstocks uh, and primarily uh, bio-based feedstocks which are used for making plastics and we term them as uh, bio-based uh, plastics uh, not all uh, bio-based uh, plastics are biodegradable and of course there are uh, a certain class of materials which uh, by nature itself are biodegradable and uh, you also have uh, uh, materials which are bio-based and biodegradable, uh, like the likes of uh, PLA, which is polylactic acid. Also, uh, in, in the biodegradable space, there are certain materials which are compostable. Compostables are something which you can use as uh, manure uh, uh, for growing uh, plants. Yeah, And also, there is uh, technologies emerging uh, wherein uh, you can make the material oxy degradable uh, which means you use certain chemicals uh, uh, which cause uh, degradation with uh, through oxygen yeah so this those materials are called oxy uh, biodegradable materials so there is a lot of confusion galler i would say about uh, the bio uh, based solutions so let's understand uh, uh, facts about uh, the bio based bio uh, materials and the compostable materials yeah so some facts about uh, biodegradable and compostable material. Uh, if you introduce a biodegradable and compostable material, then this could affect the uh, recycling chains that have been established for normal plastics. So uh, do we need these biodegradable uh, uh, and uh, compostable materials is something which we will have to ponder about. Also, uh, most important thing, it takes six months uh, for the biodegradable uh, material to uh, biodegrade and also uh, uh, six months for any of those compostable material to become as a compost. Sometimes they end up uh, generating microplastics and uh, biodegradable and compostable material need a disciplined segregation and organized landfills. Few other uh, topics about uh, the biodegradable and compostable plastics, would this change uh, the habit of plastic littering? 
because once you start telling people that this is biodegradable and compostable then people will start to throw more of plastics uh, uh, in, and would not uh, help us in properly uh, disposing these plastics so it is very very important uh, that uh, th these habits uh, as i said before which is a very very important part of the change management that we will have to do have to change otherwise uh, these solutions uh, are not going to come in the near future let's uh, move on so this is just a, a statistics about how much of bio based uh, materials are used in the polymer industry and you can see right now it's there's a very small fraction only 1% of today's structural polymers are bio based yeah and if you have to see what are these bio based polymers you have uh, bio based epoxy resin bio based uh, polyamide resin you have uh, bio based uh, polyethylene polyethylene terephthalate uh, and as i said before uh, polylactic acid so there are uh, uh um, re resins which are made through the bio route but there it is only a fraction uh, in comparison to the uh, petroleum based uh, feedstocks yeah so what is the government doing the government also has to play an important role so the government is trying to bring in a legislation which is called extended producers responsibility which is uh, shortly called as epr and what does this epr will do epr will help in reducing waste and litter promote recycling and efficient use of resources also this is supposed to create uh, new businesses and employment so this is also uh, the implementation of circular economy concept is uh, would help in generating new businesses and employment there are lot of legislations available throughout the world for plastic disposal or uh, extended producer responsibility you can see there are 310 legislations available uh, across the globe and uh, india uh, the legislation is sorry the india the legislation is still uh, under uh, being framed but uh, obviously india can adopt uh, any of the successful business models uh, that uh, has been operated in elsewhere of the world and try to uh, not to reinvent the wheel we can quickly adopt a solution which is a uh, very india specific uh, and try to resolve this problem as you can see uh, there are plastic waste management rules uh, the last one uh, was plastic waste management rules in 2016 then there was an amendment to the plastic waste management rules uh, again in 2018 and now there is an action plan uh, for producers, importers, and brand owners uh, to manage the plastic waste. So what are brands expected to do? The brands uh, would are expected to have a system for collecting back plastics. They will have to do recycling and co-processing. And the most important thing uh, I, I was discussing about the, the various uh, layers of packing, the government is trying to phase out multi-layered plastics which is non-recyclable or non-energy recoverable uh, this is something which is very very important most of the tetra packs that we use are uh, multi-layered material and it is very very difficult to recycle uh, these materials because uh, they have more than one material and it is practically impossible uh, to uh, recycle them they've been also asked to maintain a record of the persons engaged in plastic uh, which is used as a, a raw material and uh, submit quarterly reports to the government. So if I have to summarize, uh, what would be the so smart solutions for the plastic uh, industry? The first one is collect actively collective and collectively. Uh, we will have to collect, uh, come together uh, so that uh, we work in in terms of the sector wise and material wise yeah so we will have to act uh, collectively uh, that would be the first one no one can act in isolation no matter how big you are yeah so we we have large companies but as you can see that there are a lot of players involved in the whole value chain and therefore you will have to work together with all the players in the value chain uh, to uh, to resolve this problem or, or to act collectively second one is make a precise assessment of the problem 
the discourse today is governed by the visible litter, uh, not the problem of eco print. So this is again very very important. Uh, so we will have to stop uh, this uh, littering, uh, which uh, is is again a very uh, big problem. Act decisively. The government of uh, today's government, uh, headed by uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, had proposed a blanket ban on plastics, and this ban is supposed to come up by 5th June of 2022, which is, which is we're not very far away. And therefore, this means that we will have to act very, very quickly. Fourth uh, solution would be to look at it as an India-centric story. Yeah, India is has its own uh, social, economical uh, trajectory. So anything uh, solution should be kept with India in mind. And also, India has a unique system of for waste collection. Uh, so it's a very in informal sector. But as you can see, we are, we are collecting 60% uh, of uh, plastics are getting recycled. So that's a very uh, uh, good system, but can definitely be improved upon. And uh, to bring about a change in India, India, uh, as it is said over here, it's a federation of 37 geopolitical units. So it's uh, adding up uh, USA and uh, uh, European Union. So there are a lot of state legislations available, uh, and each of those states have their own rules. So it's not easy to bring about a legislation in India. So you will have to bring uh, a, a lot of 37 uh, geopolitical uh, units together to arrive at a solution. Last but not the least, uh, we will have to make those uh, leadership uh, decisions and stay away from the prescriptions of uh, foreign headquarters. Probably we will have to think uh, something which is unique for India uh, and adopt uh, a responsible business models. So uh, with this, uh, I would uh, like to close my presentation. Uh, but before I close, uh, uh, I would like to only request uh, you and I are part of this uh, uh, country and whatever little we do, uh, be it uh, at our homes, uh, be it in our schools, colleges, uh, wherever, uh, if we together uh, take that little effort uh, in uh, safely disposing plastics and enabling uh, the recycling, I think uh, this change is still possible. And I hope uh, that uh, uh, in the years to come, uh, we will have uh, this problem of plastic pollution getting minimized. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I would like to take them. Thank you. Um, thank you, Giri, sir, uh, for your uh, presentation. It was uh, quite uh, informative. I uh, do have a couple of questions here. I think uh, Rangavarsham sir actually has a question. Uh, sir, can you actually ask him the question directly? Rangavarsham sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so thank you, sir. It's a very nice uh, talk. Thank you. And um, in the plastic, uh, now is it visibly, uh, it's a solid form that falls in the solid waste management. But the yeah. other form is like uh, it's getting de uh, degraded and then it's transforming into a uh, in the size of micro. So that's how the challenge is in the uh, in the form of microplastics. Okay, yes. but of course it's reaching your table salt. That's what the report says. So it's still existing in the existing in the form of microplastic. Like, is there any sort of strategies or policy adopted to overcome such an issue? Because we are now from macro scale to micro scale of plastic uh, in terms of contamination. Yes, uh, good question, uh, uh, Dr. Rangabasham, uh, about microplastics. Yes, it's it's still a very very big concern. Uh, if you have to ask me uh, uh, at this point of time, I really don't know if there are any practical solutions available uh, right now to uh, resolve uh, these issues of uh, microplastics. Uh, and uh, probably I will also have to uh, check through if there's any specific solution which is proven. Because uh, as a concept, uh, I can see that uh, uh, th this is more prevalent uh, in, in the Western world. Say, for example, in uh, uh, European Union, uh, the EPR regulations came up uh, in 1990. So they, they, these European countries are far, far ahead of us in terms of be it legislation, implementation. So uh, probably I'll have to check them, check uh, uh, outside India if there are any solutions. 
and uh, probably is uh, there's something which i can check back and come back to you uh, dr raghav basham but right now i really don't know uh, anything uh, in this regard yeah fine sir thank you thank you sir there are a couple of questions from our students uh, yes. bharanesh who is in our th third year is yeah. basically asking is this circular economy the same in a developed country versus a, a developing country i mean is there major differences as far as the circular economy goes at implementation uh, investment funding so on and so forth yes a uh, good question uh, of course this concept uh, uh, is uh, very much prevalent uh, in the more developed world uh, be it the uh, european union australia uh, and i was uh, uh, going through some of uh, i i attended a seminar uh, in circular economy very recently and i can see that uh, the developed world is doing lot of things yeah uh, in the developed world the polluter has to pay uh, for the plastic uh, that he is uh, sending to the uh plastic uh rewaste or processing units so the the legislations the it's of course the legislations uh, say for example in europe came in 1990 and today in india we are just drafting the action points for uh, uh the extended producer responsibility uh in australia uh, there was a video which was shown in that seminar uh in uh, south australia there are very very good systems for uh, the solid waste management i'm not sure about uh, uh, the america uh, but yes the western world uh, has a, a lot of uh, uh, solutions and uh, and the question that you asked uh, where is this capital coming from uh, for so there is a company which i know called circulize uh, uh, plastics uh, circulize not circulize plastic circulize capital uh, this company funds uh, investments uh, in the recycling industry say suppose i and you have a project uh that we want to do to india we can go to this company and ask for capital and uh, i know there are uh, two companies uh, at least one in india called lucro uh, which has recently received funds uh, for uh, the investment in the concept of uh, circular economy so uh, so i think uh, the, the questions that you asked is one in terms of how uh the developed world is uh if you have to compare india with the developed world and two is in terms of the capital yes there are uh companies available which uh finance uh capital for uh, such projects i hope you i have answered your question yeah yeah uh, yeah thanks uh, one other uh, student actually asks is now the instead of actually having the 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 plan as to kind of plastic recycling Yes. you have companies such as coca cola and all who are basically doing uh, you know replacing plastic itself so you're going into more of paper and you know other kinds of products that yes. is essentially replacing plastic so which is a better approach i mean can you given that you have to phase out all the plastics by you know in the other 98 weeks by 2022 yeah. isn't it a more of an approach towards ensuring that that we do not use plastics anymore or how is the scenario right now good uh, good question i would say uh, uh, see that obviously if you can uh, in one of those uh, slides uh, in my presentation i as i said uh, if the solution is functionally equivalent if the solution is better uh, in terms of the economic footprint if the solution is scalable uh, then i think uh, we should adopt such solutions rather uh, than using plastic but uh, uh, it it's not so easy Uh, uh it's easier said than done yeah uh, so definitely uh solutions uh, should emerge in these kind of thinking so uh, design thinking in in terms of when you design products you should start thinking about uh how would this product be disposed and that is would be a welcome step uh, but yeah there, there there's a longer way to go uh, in in terms of finding alternates to plastics Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, I think Aragesan sir had a request uh, for you. Aragesan sir, irking la, sir. Sir, sir. Proceed. Proceed. Yeah, sir. Nige, you can directly ask your student, sir. Nothing, sir. Nothing. I just read it, sir. <laughs> ah, okay, sir. So Aragesan sir actually had a question. Since you are um, head of sales and marketing, yes. And um, and most of our students actually have kind of a very um. 
let me put it as you know simple view about marketing you know they kind of think marketing as going door to door and you know kind of all of that yeah so yeah. um so would you actually shed some light to our students on you know what the kind of work that you do as far as marketing is concerned and you know what exactly you know this is not door to door marketing they're not going door to door and selling teddy bears and all but what kind of marketing that you typically yes, do yes. this kind of a field yes uh, thank you uh, professor gautam i think uh, this is a very very good question and it is very good question uh, to me i would say uh, when i passed out of uh, chemical engineering i wanted to become a process engineer so my father was uh, working in the chemical industry so he had 30 uh, years of experience in uh, uh, drugs and pharmaceuticals explosives so various uh, chemical plants so uh, i aspired to be a, a chemical engineer working in process plants uh, unfortunately uh, the opportunities uh, that i got out uh, uh, after passing from shanmuga i couldn't get those opportunities and i started uh, my career uh, in technical service yeah so it is very common for anybody uh, who is studying chemical engineering to to look at uh, to look down uh, the profession of uh, marketing but uh, soon i realized uh, that Uh, that uh, a chemical engineer uh, uh, is is not only a chemical engineer who is working in a process plant or uh, doing a design i found that uh, when i started uh, working that chemical engineers were working in automotive plants uh, in uh, rather uh, in paint shops and and then i saw a uh, uh, chemical engineering a uh, people doing a uh, different uh, things especially in marketing uh, if this question was asked uh, i'll i'll try to tell them so as a chemical engineer as uh, this company what i work for uh, is a material com- uh, uh, based company so we sell polymers so we sell polycarbonates polyurethanes we go to different industries so we go to automotive industry we go to footwear industry uh, we go to hose tubing industry so we cable industry so we go into diverse uh, industries and uh, in these diverse industries we interact uh, with people uh, uh, in various functions we interact with people uh, operations people who are at the shop floor doing the manufacturing we interact with procurement people we interact with the r and d people uh, uh, that do the development uh, along with us so say say some customer of theirs wants a, a unique resin so we understand what is the requirement in terms of the material properties uh, what material is required how this material can be produced uh, or developed in our plant for example uh, we have a plant uh, in kadalur and i can tell you we are developing new resins for new applications in uh, india so we do a lot of application development so marketing is is uh, as pr- professor was gautam was saying yes you will have to travel uh, and uh, if you like traveling i would uh, strongly recommend uh, to you uh, and uh, to to join marketing also you get to meet lot of new people in your profession uh, when you do when you are in marketing so you meet a diverse set of uh, people from various uh, backgrounds so it is very very interesting uh and uh, believe me uh, when i started i had the same attitude uh, like uh, probably what you mentioned i used to look down about uh, marketing but now uh, i have a different opinion so it's very very important uh, in terms of a career that you should have a broad outlook uh, in terms of the career paths that you are taking and uh, and and this one uh, again i would say is uh think uh don't don't get into a a shell out uh, outlook that you will only choose one kind of uh, uh profession or one kind of job uh, uh, think bit little bigger and uh, i i i think uh, probably uh, uh arul mani uh, my uh, batchmate who presented uh, is is now running a company uh, there are few people who are doing very very well uh, and and they are not those uh, process engineers in in a plant so i i it, it all depends upon what do you want to do and uh, at lastly uh, you should enjoy whatever you're doing and if you're enjoying whatever you're doing i don't think uh, uh, anybody should care yeah so that is uh, a long explanation but probably yeah uh, i have said whatever i wanted to say 
Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I guess we're kind of running out of time, and I think I have some students who um, have questions. We yes. Probably we'll mail the mail them to you, and so that you can um, you know respond. Some yes. students I think have a class from four fifteen to five fifteen. Is that correct, Nagavashan sir? Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. So I think one, I think third year students are final year. I'm not sure, but have uh, class from four fifteen to five fifteen. So uh, I really yes, thank sir. you for your presentation, and I would ask uh, Arunan sir to uh, present his vote of thanks and thank our speaker for. Are giving this informative lecture. Thank you, Dr. Gautam. Uh, thank you, Mr. Girish, uh, for this uh, wonderful and uh, insightful lecture, uh, and also for readily accepting our invitation and be part of this lecture series uh, in order to uh, expand uh, the knowledge uh, beyond uh, doing this testing. Uh, Covid times, so literally, Covid uh, has uh, uh, literally made us made all of us to recalibrate uh, to the new normal. So this platform actually is uh, of interacting with uh, uh, students' interaction with uh, industry people is I am thinking uh, is uh, good, and uh, I thank once again uh, for uh, delivering. Uh, Nice lecture, and also uh, explaining the last part of related to that uh, marketing job. So you a lengthy and uh, uh, very nice explanation uh, for that. So we are uh, not restricted to one dimensional approach, uh, where we can adapt to different challenges the life throws at uh, once uh, students come out of the graduation. Okay. So I thank uh, once again, uh, profusely Shubhish. And also, I uh, thank uh, uh, coordinator uh, for this lecture series, Dr. Ranga Bashim, uh, faculty colleague, uh, Dr. B. Allegation, Dr. Gautam Dagirisu, uh, and Dr. Narain, he is not now uh, available. Uh, and uh, I also thank uh, students uh, for actively participating in this uh, session and also asking relevant uh, questions. So, I thank uh, again one and all. Uh, Go to Ranga Basham sir to conclude this meeting for me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, it's actually a highly indispensable talk uh, from the today's speaker. Uh, it's not only with respect to the pro like chemical engineering role in process design or in the production. That's one sort of component. He also highlighted like what is the potential role that to be focused. Once a product reach in the environment, and uh, how care we have supposed to take it. Okay, thank you so much. It's an interesting talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll stop recording now. Yes, sir. You can stop live streaming and recording.